Okay, good evening everyone. It's me. Um, okay, it feels so weird to talk to the computer instead of talking to all of you in the classroom. Uh, okay, I'll try my best to explain today's content. Okay, so today we will continue play with Rick's guitar shop. Okay, um, if you still remember in the last class, we changed a little bit about Rick's guitar shop. So it was a horrible program, which just do part of the job required by the customer. So we were trying to f fix that a little bit by first, um, yeah, make sure the software does the customer want it, wants wants it to do. Okay, so the customer want to search for a guitar, but the original program it won't return a correct result because of those type thing uh, the mismatch of the string okay so we fix that with a type with the enum so this is kind of a comparison directly between the type instead of uh, the string so that we skip or we save the problems of a mismatch of uh, the uppercase lowercase issue yeah make and also misspelling this will happen if we are using string okay string is pretty flexible but the more flexible you give to the user is the easier the user will have some arrow will generate some arrow from his or her side okay so you want to restrict that flexibility. All right. So first we change that part with the enum. We improve it with enum. Then uh, we did another thing. Instead of only return one object of the guitar, we return. We're now returning a list of the object. That's what we were doing. Uh, at the end of last class, we put in this uh, list, link list, to return a list of guitar to the search uh, who use the search method. Most of the time, it's a user using the search method. Yeah. Okay. So now we finish the first step make sure the software does what the customer want, wants it to do it seems okay yeah um for the customer all right if it do the software does its job however the software is not only for the user it's not only for the customer right in the company especially in a big organization we think a lot about reuse, about maintenance of the software pieces. We manage those as assets so that it can may, may save cost in the future. In the future, we, so we plan for the future as a professional software engineer. Okay. So still, we have two more steps to do to build a good software. The second step is apply basic OO principles to aid the flexibility. And third is strive for a maintainable reuse design. Okay, let's see what are those, All right? Let me go back to the slides. It's basically explain the three points, same as the textbook. I won't repeat it. Um, yeah, that's how do you fix a guitar application instead of reading those texts now let's look at the textbook 
it actually has a more direct illustration to this improvement of the original software okay so looking for the problems the second step is applying basic OO principles okay here I want to mention um, one of the important OO principles here is the object the object should do what their name indicates so it should be uh, doing something that is actually related to that object right so right now if you still remember in the search function we're using the guitar class or an object of guitar that, that is created or input created from the input of the user and inside that guitar class we have a, a builders builder builder and the type and the wood of those uh, guitars however we still have two of them we leave them empty right if you still remember the name we leave it empty and the uh, model we leave them empty uh, I don't think that's a model let's see yeah price sorry it's a serial serial number and price okay those two attributes they are now empty so whenever we create a guitar class for the purpose of search we haven't this object that with this two attributes empty so that's that actually indicate a problem the guitar class is supposed to be used in the inventory to keep those data for the search however here we use the guitar for the comparison and two of the attributes are empty that indicates this guitar class or this guitar class this object created from the guitar class used for search may need some modification so let's see how should we do that yeah that's the original search function the client provide their guitar preference and by creating a guitar object which is actually not a guitar object it's just used for search purpose right then the search tool looks through Rick's inventory each guitar is compared to the clients preference again here is comparing guitar the actual guitar data with the guitar created by the user just for search so it's ideally we shouldn't just create a class for the purpose that seems not belongs to it. Yep. And number four, Rick's client given list of uh, matching guitars. That's the search method, right? Okay. So here we want to modify that. That's a principle. That's some OO principle we need to apply here. And this is a very important, important OO principle. Is first object should do what their names indicate. If an object is named the jet, it should probably have take off and land. Sometimes you design the take tickets or sell tickets. Those method in there maybe just for convenience or you don't know where to put this method then you put it just in this uh, jet class so that's not a good practice and also each object should represent a single concept 
single concept. You don't want objects serving double or triple duty. It's the same thing. You want to keep your object easy. And it has its own job to do. And if it's not this object's job, you take it away from this object. You create another object for that purpose. Yeah. And unused properties. Yeah, probably if you have that, that may indicate, yeah, this, cl this class is not well designed. We may need some redesign. We may need a new class to, to hold this unused properties. So there's nothing a where design object is more than being used to do something that really isn't true purpose. No. We don't want to do yeah, we want we, we always have somewhere that an object is being used to do something that it really shouldn't be doing. So we want to avoid that. As a summary keep it simple and make the object do what they are supposed to do and remove other duties from that object and the duty you removed you create another new class to hold that okay so here all right we want to use a guitar specification object to help us with this search method. So instead of the idea is instead of uh, creating a whole guitar class for the search, we only create a guitar specification class for the search. So that makes more sense because when we are doing search, we give specification of the guitar. The specification we give is a class. It's called guitar specification. And we compare this guitar specification. We can compare this guitar specification with the actual guitar information in the inventory. Right? So that we, we avoid using maybe serial number, price, these things. Because they are live they are left empty in the original GitHub object that used for search. Yeah. So here we want to take out some of the attributes from the guitar and put them into the guitar specification class. Okay. So as I mentioned, the GitHub specification, specification class is used for identify, you know, specify the information from the user. So obviously, we should put all the attributes into the GitHub specification, except for the serial number and price, right? So we should put builder, model, type backwood top wood we remove that from guitar and we put them into the guitar specification also here we we put the method get builder get model get type get backwood get top wood we remove it from guitar we put them in the guitar specification okay then you may ask a question if we remove all the builder model type those information from the guitar how can we hold this information in the guitar invent inventory? So we use something else. We use, if you still remember, we, we, we use a, we have a has a relationship in the object oriented design, right? So we use aggregation. We can put the guitar specification as a part of the guitar, as a member of the guitar. So then after the modification, it should look something like this. See, from the original guitar, original guitar class, okay, we only keep serial number and price. And those 
important information we use in the specification, we'll just put them in the specification. And we don't want to repeat them. We don't want to repeat them again in the guitar. Uh, we don't want to have a two copy of the builder, both in guitar specification and the guitar. So instead, we can just put the guitar specification here as a member of the guitar so that the guitar still have the, all this information of the guitar specification. It still has the access. It also has the access to all this method as well. Yeah, so this change make it more like an object oriented, a well object oriented design. Okay. Make it match more object oriented design principle. So here again the principle is we want to keep the object the class simple. Okay. We want the class or the object from that class to do only the job it is supposed to do. Right. We don't want the guitar we don't want the guitar to pay attention to the search. We don't want to use guitar for search. Guitar is to store the information of a guitar, extra guitar. We use guitar specification for the search. Yeah. Right? Now it's updated. Okay. Cool. So we apply some uh, basic OO principles here. Yes. We want to keep the object simple to do the job, to do its own job. And remove the job that shouldn't that shouldn't be done by that class. Okay. Then uh, we're not done yet. We ate another class, but think it back to the search, right? The search is still using the guitar to compare with guitar. Now we want to specify, we want to change a little bit of the search to make the search use the guitar specification for the search. So it's a simple process here. Okay. So here we made two change. First is uh, instead of a taking in the parameter of a guitar, we, we are now taking in the parameter of guitar specification. And guitar specification. Uh, the guitar specification. Okay, here this guitar, this guitar spec object is a object that used to be compared with the search spec. How can we get this? It is getting it. We get it from the guitar extra guitar object in that inventory we call the get specification method to return a sp guitar specification then we can use the guitar specification okay we can get a, a guitar specification to compare with the search specification now we're comparing still comparing two objects but it's not guitar object with guitar object. We are now comparing a specification object that created from the input of the user. We compare that object with the guitar specification object. That is, uh, we get it from the actual guitar object in that inventory, and then we compare them to see if we can find match, right? So rest of it, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, we, we just, uh, we just uh, call the specification get type and compare with the guitar specification, the, the type of guitar specification, yeah. And the, the, the algorithm is the same. If it's, if it's match, we continue, continue, and then if all match, if all the attribute match, we put them into the return list. Okay. 
written list. Yeah. So at this moment, at this moment, we have changed this simple guitar inventory program to make it match more to make it uh, match more about the object oriented uh, design principles now yeah. so that's the second step okay you may have the question that why are we doing this Cause, yeah we, we we yes we do follow the OOD principle yes but what is the benefit right uh, it's hard to tell the benefit at this current stage okay however if we are going to do some change to the code like what we are doing in the third step okay you will see how this change how the new class guitar specification change how the how the new class guitar specification helps the change okay let's see the third step right so in the third step what we're trying to do is strive for maintainable and reusable design okay so we in other words after we have some all principles now we are able to apply some patterns that is based on those OO principles you cannot apply those design patterns without following the OO principles first now let's see this example okay assume that okay Rick which is a who is a customer who is the owner of the guitar shop now he wants to add a new type of guitar okay it's called a 12 string 12 string guitar to add the support for a 12 string guitar uh, we actually do not have a attribute that specify how many strings does the guitar have right Let's go back a little bit. See here. We have builder model type. Okay, and the type is not the like number of string. It's acoustic electric. And back wood, top wood, price server number. Okay. No place to specify the number of strings. But Rick has this um demand the new requirement so what shall we do obviously we need a new attributes to be added right a new attributes Be the number of string yeah. right that is what the system looks like for now guitar specification inventory the guitar and the guitar yeah so now yeah we want to do uh, uh, we want to add a new property number of string and we want to have a master uh, get number of strings uh, okay if you are dealing with this um, what do you think you can modify to include the support for the new attributes obviously you will think uh, yeah you will know that you want to add that attributes into the guitar specification right because that's actually the place to specify the important attributes that can be that should be used in the search for the guitar and the number of strings obviously it's an attribute that the customer will use it for the search right so it's easy that 
we come up with this idea to put a new attributes in the guitar specification. Yes. And but that's not all. Because uh, for the whole system, we still need to do the search. Uh, we need to do the search. We need to do the search according to the uh, guitar specification, according to the attributes in the guitar specification. Okay. All right. Let's see. So we put the new attributes here in the GitHub specification. However, if we add this new property to the GitHub specification, we still need to modify a lot of things in the guitar and inventory, right? Because the constructor of guitar needs to take uh, the constructor of guitar needs to take the attributes of a uh, number of strings in order to construct a guitar class right and the search master it needs to include the comparison between the number of strings so if we want to include it include that number of string we need to modify literally we need to modify all the class all the classes so that indicates a problem right that indicates that all this uh, uh, all these classes in this system they are tightly coupled tightly coupled we want loosely coupled tightly coupled means um, the one class is using another class heavily too much we can reduce it by using the encapsulation idea of the object oriented design right we want to isolate this change if we are if we if one, one, at, at the time when we change something if we want to add the new attributes when we want to attribute when we want to add a new attributes if we are going to change all the classes that indicates we want to isolate this change we want to separate this feature from all the classes so that the next time when we want to change it again like we want to add a new attributes this time is 12 is a number of string maybe next time a new attribute is uh, the wireless network who knows uh, maybe there's a wireless network support for guitar okay so it change it changes a lot so that means if that changes a lot we want to isolate that part we want to isolate this attributes okay now let's see how can we do this all right we want if we are not going to isolate this we need to change all the classes basically another way another way it looks smart so yeah so here is a first step right we uh, get our specification yes we create this new attributes in this get our specification with the extra attributes number of strings so everyone knows we should do this
So this is an amazing part. All right. So in the guitar class, the old constructor it take everything, every single attribute, including string number, serial number, price, and everything in the specification, right? Including uh, the model, brand, material, everything in the specification. It take all those attributes separately. But now we're doing something else. Instead of taking all the attributes, we take the guitar's own attributes and an attributes just called guitar specification, right? So that so this gives a benefit that when we change something in the guitar specification, we don't have to change this constructor of guitar at all, right? Because things change in the guitar specification is encapsulated in this class in this single class and it won't have influence in this constructor this constructor all the, this constructor does is it take this specification and assign it to the assign it to an to the attributes of the guitar so what changes in the specification it's not necessary for the guitar to know all this, right? Okay, and then in the search method, right? The old search method, if you still remember, it's like, okay, search. Uh, I'm gonna get information from guitar. I'm gonna get information from the search specification. I'm getting, I'm comparing every attributes. So if it has 10 attributes, I'm getting 10 attributes from, I'm talking with the guitar specification. I'm talking with the guitar specification for 10 times, and I'm gonna talk with the search specification, specification object for 10 times, so that I can pull all those 10 attributes and compare them. So that indicates that indicates that you shouldn't make the class talk with each other this frequently. That indicate a bad design, All right? So here, instead of uh, calling them ten times, I only call them once. We call guitar specification dot matches. Right? Dot matches. Okay. The matches it doesn't it didn't exist in the guitar specification class so we need to add this new method okay this new method to the guitar specification class so that when we are trying to to see if this match we just call it from the guitar specification object once only once okay so this type of code we still need them but instead of making them in search now it is in the guitar specification class right and it further match the object oriented design principles you want object to do the thing that it is supposed to do okay so this guitar specification to see if it's match it makes sense to let this task be done by this guitar specification class instead of the guitar inventory uh, the search method in the guitar inventory class right so in other words we delegate delegate we send the job to the guitar specification we let a part of I like the part a part of me to do this job like I I let my hand to do the writing why I, I using I let my uh, ear to listen to the music okay so it's not I, I don't I don't like 
this this human class do not do it all the time. The human class use the hand class to do the writing. The human class use the okay ear class to to hear to listen to the music. So it's the same thing here. We want the inventory class to use the guitar specification class specification class to to do the match. So that we finish, we finish this modification. Okay. So okay. Here shows the benefit of adding that new class. Remember, in the second step, when we introduce the new guitar specific specification class, we just want to follow those principles, but we do not see the benefits so obviously. But now here. It's easy to tell that with the new guitar specific specification class, we can encapsulate all the changes into this class so that when we add new attributes, we don't have to change the guitar class. We don't have to change the inventory class anymore. We just need to change one class. So it is encapsulated. The change is encapsulated so that it's easier to maintain this software. Okay, how I hope you get this idea. Alright. So we finish the third step. Strive for maintainable reusable design. Okay. Still actually we can combine the second and third step. They basically we're trying to use all principles for a maintainable design. Okay. And the first step, we modify. Uh, we we fix some bugs. Okay, that's everyone will do. But as a software engineer who has the OO, who has the object-oriented design knowledge, you need to further think about your application how can you make it follow the principles so that it will reach a maintainable reusable design okay and this is a good and this is a good example this guitar shop is a good example it seems follow the principle does nothing for us doesn't doesn't benefit for us at that moment second step however in the third step if we do not have this guitar specification class how can we isolate all these changes into one class? Every time we add the new attributes, we have to modify all this, all these classes in the system. That's first. It's a, this first. That's a lot of work. Second, there's no guarantee that you can do all the change correctly every time you add the new attributes the more changes you need to make the easier you get bugs right so yeah I hope you remember this this three step and you can uh, review them in the textbook okay and for the second third step for the third step we mentioned this thing called delegation okay so that's we send the job to another class to let that class did that job for me so that's an important idea which we we already talked a little bit so I'm gonna skip this uh, uh, slides basically it's talking about the same thing what I just talked so here we were talking about responsibility driven design okay do you find the connection we, we were talking about this last week but yeah we found the connection here responsibility driven design it's like we have a clear responsibility for every class and whenever there's a job we can find we can identify which class should be I should identify should should be responsible for that job so that we send this job to that class instead of a one class doing everything 
okay Doing everything yeah so we're talking about a CRC card like this is a template of CRC card a class has its name subclass civil class responsibility collaborators uh, class name of course it's a name of class the responsibility describes the okay the problem to be solved in this class not it's sub this class okay oh it's got disconnected okay so, so yeah I'm repeating that responsibility means the responsibility that belongs to this class not its collaborators and collaborators specify the classes that provide services to this class. So must include all these classes. And it may include classes that require services provided by this class. So it's a may. So you can do it or not. Because uh, because if this class is providing some service to another class, then that class have already have that information. But this is important because without the class, the classes that provide the services to this class, this class is not a complete class. All right, and types of classes, the different types of classes, like data managers, data or state class, responsibilities to maintain the data or state information, the nonce in the problem description and the fundamental building blocks of the design okay for example let's go back to this guitar shop okay the guitar is a data manager data it's a data class right yeah uh data sinks or data sources classes that generate data or accept the data and then process them further they don't hold the data for they don't hold the data for a period of time. Okay, so which class is that in the previous example? Yeah, I think you have the answer. The actually the uh, uh, not a guitar. The guitar specification class. They generate the data, accept the data, process the data, doing the match. They don't hold the data for a period of time, right? It's just used for the search, then it's it's gone. But the data manager data class, it stays there. The guitar stays there because we store it somewhere. We, we want to use that for the comparison. It's an inventory. But this data syncs the sources that uh, data specification class is used only for the search most of the time view or observer classes uh, it's uh, if you familiar with MVC model so the actual data is called the model the guitar is a model and we have some uh, class to display that model um, for example you can display that class you can display the guitar a list of guitars name to the user Okay, the guitar is the model. So another class, maybe it's called display class. They get information from all the from the list of the data specification objects, and then output those guitars information in the web page on the web page. Okay. Also, that display class can do it another way. It can just show uh, some uh, show one class. Or highlight some class so that are implemented in the view class observer class yeah so again it's an uh, principle of the isolation we want to isolate the model and the view so that you can provide different view to the users you can extend this you this view the functionality of the view because you want your system to present to different users with uh, different needs so you provide various kind of displays but you don't want to do them in the model you do it in another class called view so that you can easily maintain that and change that without touching the model the actual model and facilitator or helper classes 
So the classes maintain little or no state information. They assist the execution of complex tasks. For example, when we are testing, when we are doing the testing, uh, testing for the uh, for the system we just uh, we just taught. The testing class is a facilitator class. It maintains no information of the system. It just assists the execution, testing execution. All right. Okay. So last talking, last we talk about some design processes of the responsibility driven. Okay. So what we do is we uh, first we discover classes and define what responsibilities are assigned to each class. Right. We start from obvious class and progress to the unknown by simulating scenarios. We are simulating the scenarios that, that we are using the system. Okay. So that when we are simulating these scenarios, we will, when we have those flow, workflow, we will know what kind of responsibilities, what kind of responsibilities are there. And then we can assign it, we can assign this responsibility to its corresponding class. Right. Assign each action as a responsibility to specific class on the CRC card. And different scenario where generated different responsibilities. So that's why we need simulating scenarios instead of simulating a scenario. And task become of uh, becomes one of the developing a clear description and uh, understanding of each component of the system. Yeah. We use task to help us do this. Yeah, so first step, discover the class and responsibility, their responsibility. Then second, describe how those responsibility are to be achieved. So any value assessed or modified wide, widely or that exists for a significant period of time should be managed. For, yeah, this is an example of how the responsibility be achieved. Okay. So data modified wildly or that exists for a significant period should be managed. Okay, like the guitar. And eight data values managed by the class to the CRC card. Okay. And discover the third step is discover relations between the classes to identify the responsibility. Okay, we talk about is kind of right. It's is kind of means like is a relations like a is a relationship. Yeah, it is is a relationship. Uh, if you remember, we talked we talked about the principles. How should when should we use that? is a relations if you forget please refer back to the week three i guess week three week three materials okay and find is part of relations the same uh, we talk about is part of relations in the third week materials also we find uh, is an analogs analogs to relations that means the two class basically they have the same uh, sum of the same responsibility. It is usually a design that they share a super class, right? And if you identify the is kind of, this allows you to assign responsibility to the super class. And it's part of it helps you to identify a clear distinct distinction between the whole part help helps determine where the responsibility should be the delegation, right? We give the job to the part to the to the part of this class. We give the match job to the to the guitar specification class instead of giving that job to the guitar class or giving that job to the inventory class. Okay, we use it. We use the part is part of the part the class that is part of uh, another class uh, we, we, we want it have this uh, uh, duties 
uh, its own duty. We want to have a, to do its own job. Yeah, we clearly separate the job for classes. And number four, we discover relationships between classes to identify the collaborations. Yeah. Yeah. So that's more about this is part of relations. The whole part of relations. It has two type. First is composite class and the object that compose compose it. The composite class is responsible for knowing about its parts. For example, a car must must collaborate with its part steering wheel, which turns the wheels, in order to feel, fulfill its responsibility of turning, right? And another one is container class and its elements. It may or may not require collaboration. Okay, it depends on the domain. Like an array contains the elements, but do not need to send a message to them. So that's two different type of the is part relations. And also find has knowledge of relations. Where this implies there's a responsibility to know information. One class know about another class because it needs to get information from that class. And it depend, depends upon relations. Uh, for example, uh, a drawing changes with the addition of a drawing elements. The drawing depends upon the structure of the drawing elements. Okay, so it really indicates the specification by change with. So if one class changes, the class that uses this class, it changes accordingly. Okay, it changes accordingly. So that's basically depends upon relations. So okay, so we identify all these relations, okay, to identify the collaborations. So what are we doing here? Let's go back. So it's a design process. First, discover classes that define what responsibilities are assigned. We use scenarios to find the responsibility and their classes. Now we have a whole bunch of classes and their responsibilities. And then the second step, how does the responsibility are to be achieved? For example, here, uh, this uh, data, uh, if we want to do this data thing, we want, to, we want it to be hold somewhere. And number three, we discover relations between classes to further identify the responsibilities. Whole bunch of relations. Yeah. And then also the relations uh, between the classes to identify the collaborations. That's how we, so we find all those. So basically what we're doing is two things, okay? First, we identify classes and responsibilities. Second, we identify the collaborations between the classes, like the responsibilities. Okay, identify these responsibilities of each classes. So what we want to do is we want to have classes and their relations and each class's responsibilities. Okay, remember this. We're doing responsibility driven design with this CRC card. Okay, we want to this first step. In a summary, we want to um, identify, cl identify classes, find the relations between the classes, and identify the different responsibilities of these classes. So that when we have these steps done, we know uh, when we are implementing these classes, what should be included, what method, what, what attributes should be included in each class in order to achieve their responsibilities. Okay, that's uh, 
about responsibility driven design yes okay so let's go back to see if there's something missing in the main slides how do we fix a guitar application yes we we do a whole bunch of things loosely couple the design reducing the dependency we don't want the search to call all the like to to call the other object to call the other class or object 10 times every search so we use a match method in the guitar specification class and we use delegation to reduce dependency yeah we use the delegation we delegate that match we delegate delegate the job of match to the specification guitar specification class what is delegation okay it's uh, an act the object forwarding an operation to another object so it let other object that's that that's its own job well okay if you like you want KSU to provide some education then KSU delegate that to the faculty delegation okay delegation let each object worry about its own functionalities make an object less dependent loosely coupled yeah delegation is a way of compensation making compensation as a powerful for reuse yeah and two techniques for re for two techniques for reuse is a white box and black box uh, it's inheritance and compensation yeah inheritance is also also the reuse okay but compensation which is a delegation what difference is the white box and black box delegation definitely is a black box so, so when the case you delegate something use a delegation to let the faculty to give the job the faculty has a control of the master implementation right yeah so advantage of inheritance uh yeah I guess we we covered that a little bit in the third week so define uh, is support directly by the language and easier to modify and implement it, implement it and this advantage is uh, we have that example when we want to change uh, if, if, if it's an unnecessary inheritance it's uh, make it painful to change so can change in her inherit the implementation at the wrong time and the parent class often define part of the subclass is less flexible because inheritance expose their parent implementation somehow it's breaking the encapsulation and changing the parent will lead to changing the subclass uh, yeah and inherited attributes is inappropriately selected that's what result in some problem okay so so we don't want uh, the change to mess up other class so it's actually a sort of uh, tightly coupled uh, classes between the subclass and the superclass superclass but black box reuse like conversation delegation it's uh, yeah it's a uh, another type of reuse but it has everything has its pros, pros and cons right so black the black box reuse conversation or delegation it are assessed solely through the inheritance interface no break of encapsulation and any object can be re replaced by another at the wrong time as long as they are at the same type right uh, like uh, if we are using um, search the search okay guitar specification dot match right in the future the rig may include a piano in his in his store right he can just use the piano specification dot match to replace that so that the, he, he don't have to he doesn't have to change the classes the inventory classes so that's can be replaced at the wrong time right pretty flexible and the favorite object composition over classes inheritance yeah we favor object composition over class inheritance 
but it's not always true okay there are some scenario we still want inheritance yeah they work together yeah delegation two objects handle a request it's similar to subclass uh, deferring request to the parent in delegation uh, the receiver passes itself to the delegate to let the delegated operation refer to the receiver yeah again think about the match method the match operation in the guitar specification class okay and this is another another example is uh, the window it has an area method okay it can be delegated to a rectangle or it can be delegated to a circle so that the window can show a rectangle window or it can show a circle window so make it flexible also think about yeah again if you understand the guitar shop ex example uh, you can think about that what is delegating there what is delegated there yeah advantages change behaviors at wrong time yeah uh, similar to the when we are talking about uh, the black box the black box conversation Conversation, delegation, pretty similar. So window can become circular at the runtime. That's an example. Yeah, runtime costs. Yes, of course. And delegation in use, in used in patterns. Uh, yeah, we have a whole bunch of patterns, design patterns that use this delegation. So if you are following these principles, this design patterns are available to you. It will help that with the design for the help with your design okay so that's all for today i hope you get the idea of uh, how do we use the object oriented design principle to help us to build a great software and we talk about a very important very very important object oriented design principle that is we want the object to do the job that is supposed to do that it is supposed to do and we don't want it to do the job for other objects right and we want the encapsulation we want the isolation encapsulation and we want loose coupled design all right so that's it for today thank you very much